Hey everybody, it's your girl Success and today I just want to give you some food for thought. I'm coming out of Ephesians uh, 6 where we're talking about the whole armor of God and this spoke to me today because um, the Lord had brought it to my mind the other day and he brought it back to me today because I found something within verse 16 that I hadn't really paid attention to over the years and verse 16 says above all so above all the other wep um, the, we're talking about the whole armor of God. So above all the other parts of the armor, it's saying here that above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. And so it's speaking to me again this morning. He brought it back to my mind because I'm like, okay, God, this is really powerful. And if we miss it, then it's detrimental. So, okay. So it says here that Faith is our shield and it is a shield against <clears throat> the, the enemy, right? In war, back in the day, you will see that they would have these big shields that will protect them from the arrows that were being um, fired at them. Take, for example, the movie 300, right? Or a lot of those old movies, even not, not just arrows, swords as well. They would use it to block swords, right? So here was, um, the Bible is telling us that um, f our faith is our shield. What is faith? <laughs> We're not going to go into that right now. But again, this is just food for thought. But faith is, according to Hebrews 11 and 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Let me see if I can get it correctly. The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now that is a whole other video and teaching in itself. But let's just know that uh, we have to have faith. The Bible also tells us that it's um, by faith that we are saved, right? That is in, let's see, <clears throat> Ephesians 2, it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, right? Through our belief. Um, it also tells us in Hebrews 11 and 6 that um, without faith it is impossible to please God, right? These are just some scriptures. Um, that you can think about as I am talking about what I'm talking about today. Feel free to look up all the other scriptures you, um, you can find on faith. There are so many, right? So we're talking again about the whole armor. We're talking about how um, faith is a shield that we have as soldiers for Christ, right? So it's telling us in verse 16 of Ephesians 6 that with faith that we have, we'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. So thinking of the word darts, dart, a dart is, is something that you throw and it leaves holes in whatever the target is that it hits. If you play darts before and you look at the board, you will see that there are holes everywhere that the dart landed, right? So not only are the darts that the enemy is shooting at us, um, leaves holes, but it also will burn up whatever it hits. Fire burns, turns things into ashes, um, till it's no more, right? So not only is he throwing darts that are going to leave holes in our faith, right? The things that we believe, but these um, darts are also going to burn up whatever it is that we're believing. So whatever areas um, of faith that we have. So for, for example, some people have faith in some areas, but they're lacking faith in other areas. Like some people can believe God to, uh, let's just say heal them, but he, they don't believe that God, um, will deal with their finances. There are some people believe that God, you know, oh, believing God to help them with their finances, but then they're not believing God to help them um, in regards to, let's say, um, dealing with their husband or dealing with their child or dealing with their wife or whatever the scenario is, right? So, <clears throat> so again, it says, but above all, so above all the other parts of our armor that we have, he's saying that the shield of faith is important here. It says above all the others we need. And why is that? Because again, our faith 
in God is what saves us, right? So let's just say we have everything else, but if we don't have the faith, guess what? Where's the salvation? Because we're believing in God's word that he said he sent his son to die for us so that we can be saved. We are believing that Jesus exists. We are believing that he actually died for our sins. We are believing that through him, we have salvation. Through him, we are restored unto God. Through him, we're going to get to be back with God in the end. Through him, right? So that's that's our faith. That's what we're believing in. Okay, so... So darts poke holes, they poke holes in whatever target they hit. And in this case, the target is our faith, right? Holes, these holes, why didn't he just use arrows? Because arrows pierce, they pierce, and they can actually kill you. Yes, the Bible says that the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy, but not always, I should say his tactic is not always so obvious in that he is just gonna straight out do something. These, these holes that the dart is making, like these holes, they're pinholes, the holes that the dart, the darts are making, um, over a period of time become big holes and will totally mess up your belief, your faith, your understanding, what you know to be true as a result. And it's over time because these little holes are not doing that much damage. However, um, when the fire comes, it says, cause they're fiery. When the fire comes with these darts, it has the potential to do major, major damage, right? However, let's just say that when the dart comes, let's say the dart comes in one area of your faith. Let's say it's your finances, right? So let's say that that dart, which is fiery, right, is attacking your faith to believe that God will provide through your finances. And let's just say that that's just one area that now is on fire, right? That he is messing with your faith to believe in this area. And so let's just say you have some faith. And so it says that our faith will quench these fiery darts. So let's just say you have no faith in that area at all. Guess what? Because you don't have the faith in that area, that fiery dart is going to, you know, is going to consume that area of your life to the point where you don't believe, right? You you didn't believe in the first place, right? But now it's even, you know, eradicating whatever is in there. So let's just say you had some faith in that area and that fiery dart comes. It's going to, unless you can you know, believe to the point where you're praying and you're believing and God is, you know, uh, giving you another measure of faith or he's, you know, he's helping you with the faith that you currently have, whatever that might be, then if you're not aware, it's going to consume whatever you do have. It's going to consume whatever is there. Uh, Let's go here. Um, So again, the enemy has the ability if we allow him to kill um, and to destroy whatever it is that we're believing. However, he is strategic in the things that he does in the various areas of our lives. And with people, he does things differently because he, he knows he sees the way we act. He sees the way we respond to things and he uses that against us. Um, let's see. So we know I've said that Um, these fiery darts are targeting our faith, which is why he says to use the shield of faith, which quenches these fiery darts. Um, so the dart hits the target, which is our faith, which is our belief, the various areas in which we are believing in which we do have faith. Um, and it's our belief in that God is able to do a thing. It could be our belief in who God is our belief in um, what God has already done in that he has sent his son for us. You know, it, it's just whatever that is that he's using in that moment, in that area of your life. So, which is why we need to guard our minds um, because a lot of times that's where our belief is coming from, right? But it also says that we're supposed to believe in our heart. 
Sometimes the belief is just, it stays up here in our minds and it hasn't even reached our heart yet. Um, let's see. So by faith, we know that we are saved. By faith, we know that we have our ability to please God. And it's by faith that we walk this Christian walk. So these are some of the things. This is not all inclusive. Again, this is just food for thought. You know, this is just some of the things that God gave me this morning. So these are some of the areas. So that the enemy, the evil one, is trying to destroy, okay? And guess what? The enemy, he is so patient. He, he watches, he, he watches, and he, he then uses that, whatever it is he's learning and observing, and he uses that against us. And that, that way he knows where to throw his darts, right? So that he knows where he needs to put these holes and what needs to be consumed and where our faith is. So what are the darts that he uses? The darts are lies. And how do I know that the darts are lies? Because what is our faith? Our faith is a belief, right? In God, in what he's able to do, in what he's already done, etc. right? And so um, if we're believing in a thing, what he's going to do is he's going to contradict what we are believing. And how he does this is he does it by lying to us. And how do I know that? Because the Bible says that he's the father of lies. So he is lying to us about, well, you know, God is not, he can't do that. God won't do that. Uh, God ain't going to do that because guess what? You done messed up. You have been acting the complete fool. So why should God listen to you? Why is God going to do what he says he's going to do? Because you're not doing what you say you're going to do for God. You know, I mean, he will throw some stuff in your mind, you know, go ahead and you could do that. Or he will, what he'll do is what I've experienced is that he will, he will allow somebody to speak into your life who doesn't necessarily believe like you believe. And they will now interject what they believe onto your mind, right? And that will then get you to thinking, well, maybe what I believed or was taught isn't necessarily true. And then you then start to doubt what it is you believed, right? And you start eventually believing the lies or not. You, you may eventually start believing the lies and then guess what? That area of belief that you had is now either a hot mess or you have totally um, disregarded what you were taught or believed previously or maybe not. But again, we have to be aware of these darts, of the lies, of the tricks that the enemy uses against us. The Bible says that um, our faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if we're limited in our faith or our faith is not where we, where it should be, we have to question ourselves and say, okay, so what happened? Or why don't I believe? Um, or where is my faith and why isn't my faith where it needs to be? Is it because you're not hearing the word, um, as often as you should? Is it because, um, you're not reading the word as often as you should, or is it because what you're hearing, you're not understanding or what you're reading, you're not understanding, or, you know, you know yourself. So think about yourself. So again, um, this is just food for thought. This is what has been on my mind a couple of days ago and the Lord brought it back today. So apparently I needed to put it out there. And so, um, I just also want you to know that I wrote down here that, um, when we read the word, it awakens a response of faith within us. And so sometimes we get to a place where we feel like, okay, you know, I just want to rest or I had a long week or a long day and I just want to relax and veg out on some, some television, some Netflix, some Hulu, you know, or whatever it is. What happens if we're not cautious is that this relaxing that we need um, then takes away from, oh, well, let me just get on my knees instead, or, oh, let me just read the word, or, oh, let me just meditate on the word. And little by little, little by little, we, we get to the place where we are um, not protected, okay? And we're supposed to have this armor on so that when the enemy comes, um, we're supposed to be protected and able to stand. And if we're not careful again and cautious again, um, and we start overindulging in the fact that we need a rest, we need a break, we need a time out, um, whatever that might be, he will then use that against us in the future. And so I just want you guys to be aware. Just remember that above all else, that 
our faith is so important and that the enemy will use that against us to uh, separate us from from what we believe, from what we've learned, from what we know to be true, and will leave us susceptible to being destroyed by these fiery darts that he's sending our way. And so that's just the word for today, you guys. I pray it's a blessing to you. Hit me up. And until next time, God bless you. Bye-bye.